everybody. Welcome to the Triforce Podcast with me, Sips. Hello, Sips. Hi. And Hirian Flax. Hello. I've had, it's a lovely sunny day outside. I can see I'm looking forward to going outside. Normally I'd be streaming today, but I'm having a little bit of time off. And so I'm going to go and read my book outside. I've got a new book to read. Right. Um, it's What's called the Revenger. Apparently it's like a bit of space pirates. It's Alistair Reynolds. Um, I like him. I like space. I like pirates. So, and I like sunshine. So, I'm, I'm going to put some suntan cream on. Right. I'm going to go outside. I'm going to lube myself up for the outside world. I'm going to bust out of my bubble. Okay. Nice. I've been, I've been sat inside playing, playing, to play and play games all week, and painting some Warhammer and building some Lego. I've, I've had, been having a nice, chill, relaxing time. Right. Um, I feel like a toddler though, a little bit. Like, do you know what I mean? Just, or, or at least a teenager. Um, doing all the stuff I used to do when I was a teenager, but I'm having a good. I'm having a good time. Hmm. What about you guys? What you guys been doing this week? I've been um, s- sitting inside and playing video games um, as usual all week, all week long. That's uh, that's, that's good stuff. You've been playing Death Stranding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, fi- I finished it. Yeah, I saw. Um, so did I actually, uh, and I, I really liked it. Somebody said to me beforehand um this game is quite relevant for the pandemic because everyone's trapped inside and they have to have their packages delivered to each other and they yeah. can't go outside because there's danger yeah there's there. been some similarities drawn um, to it um, but i wasn't I really mean, convinced there were that many similarities well um, no i mean it's beyond just... <laughs> the fact that everyone's like isolated in the little bunkers yeah you know? and, and and receives parcels in their little bunkers <laughs> quite regularly from amazon uh, originally when i started playing death stranding i thought that you were because the sort of story sets it up like you're this really important kind of like lifeline to these people who couldn't survive without you okay yeah and then immediately they're like uh, i've got like a load of old tires <laughs> or like just a load of, a load of literal shit that yeah. they don't even want and yeah. they're like can you just deliver this this one girl with a junk dealer who wants you to ship around like shit tons of junk yeah <laughs> like fuck me what what i'm supposed to be like this i'm risking my life to carry like just old fucking like i don't know chassis and crap around for you yeah but then oh, man. but then he builds like good stuff with it though so it's useful right mm. it, builds- it's, it's about building rebuilding the connections between people isn't it like that's i think that's it at its core yeah it's like saying we won't really be humans again until we can fuck about with banal shit like that right and that sort of is otherwise we're essentially just surviving and that's not really the human experience at the moment you know we've reached possibly exist without her magazines so you have to deliver a fucking magazines to her right right. so it makes her feel human again (laughs) and it restores that sort of that boring everyday shit is what makes us uh able to enjoy life like if we just lived like we did when we were hunter gatherers apparently though hunter gatherers had a pretty sweet time of it you gather for a few hours then you can just chill the rest Hunt of the day. For a few hours. Yeah, I wonder what they did. <laughs> well, I think it's, well, I think it's it's being uh, purposeful, right? Like, and I think that that is something that a lot of people don't have nowadays. You know what I mean? Like, especially like, especially like in our society where like a lot of stuff is uh, is is already taken care of for you, sort of thing. I, I think a lot of people feel like a, a disconnect on that level, right? They don't have any 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 like tangible purpose or whatever. Like me, I just sit around and play video games all day. You know what I mean? And like, I'm I'm fairly happy with that. But I don't know. Sometimes I think like, you know, it'd be pretty. It'd be pretty neat to have to to go out and and do something really important <laughs> every day. You know what? I, right. I was watching Seinfeld last night. That's funny. You should mention that because um, they're all on like I think it's on Amazon Prime or something. And I was watching some episodes, and there's one where George goes to get a job, and the guy says, "Well, I'd love to bring you on board." However, and then he goes, "Oh, let me take this call." And uh, George is like, however, what? Or, you know, did, did I get the job? And he, he never finds out. So he just turns up to work because the guy's gone on holiday. So he just turns up and says, yeah, I start today. They give him an office and they give him this file, the Penske file. Right. And I was like, wow, imagine having like an office and people coming to you and saying, here's some work we need you to do. And it's something I haven't done in such a long time. <laughs> yeah. And I've never had an office. And I, I was like, imagine having a job. Like it was actually quite exciting, the idea of going to work. And having colleagues and and, sure, uh, and work and stuff. I, I don't know if you remember much about being at work, but I, I remember specifically getting a lot of work given to me where I just thought, 
what is the fucking point of this? Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and you work on it for months. And it's just like, and you knew at the end of it, everybody's pulling in like all these hours, overtime, everything. Everybody's making a big deal of it. And you just knew at the back of your mind, like, this is this is going nowhere. Like, yeah. we, we, will, we will implement this or whatever. And right now, everybody's talking about it like it's going to be like a game changer or like, you know, we're going to live in some new world when we're done or whatever. And a week after it's it's in, nobody will care about it, and it'll sit there and collect dust, and everybody will just go back to doing the same stuff that they all, always done. And nine times I'm out sure, of ten, yeah. uh, that was true. <laughs> like I, was, I knew straight away that if I like, I would be excited on my first day, and then the second day I'd be like, oh, I've got to go into work. Like yeah. it would, you know, what I mean, like I I don't miss it, but in a weird way, I, I miss my ideal idea of what a job would be yeah where i can basically i have some cool stuff i'm involved in it's exciting and interesting ever changing that's not going to happen like i like you said i've had jobs and it's just boring as shit yeah you have to get up and go in you sit there all your time even when you're bored to tears and you don't want to do it anymore you still got to do it it's like it, it's a yoke i i always just i i always figured that salespeople had the best time at jobs you know what i mean like it sounds like the worst because you always see like those um, you know, like, like the those conventions for like door to door vacuum cleaner salesmen and stuff, and they always look really sad, right? They're always like these middle aged right. men who just like act really silly and and you know. But I think I think in terms of actual getting like tangible satisfaction from your job, it probably feels pretty good to sell stuff, right? It probably I guess, feels yeah. pretty Especially good to have a commish. conversation with somebody, convince them to buy something. Um, and then you put an order in and then you get a commission or, or you get paid for it. And it probably just feels like, uh, closer to like, you know, like a old, old world, like trading or being a merchant or something like that right. as you can Especially get. Especially right? if what you're selling is good. If you're yeah. selling shit, that would suck. Like you feel bad. Compared to like, say working in like IT or something like, uh, you know, behind the scenes or whatever, there's tangible work, yeah, but it's it's uh, oftentimes it's not understood or appreciated, and usually it's instigated by people who don't know what they're doing, right? Yeah. So you your your oversight in in your work and stuff is uh, never great, you know, because again, these you have to deal with non technical people a lot. The customer it, in general, exactly, yeah, yeah, has no idea what they're talking about or how it works. Yeah, it's frustrating. And, and there's a huge disconnect between what you're doing and what the people who are trying to sell the service that you're creating are doing because yeah. they're always looking for an angle or like some surefire way of, you know, getting somebody on board or whatever. And the whole time you're thinking, hang on a second, what you're describing isn't what we're doing. Or, you know, you're you're just inventing stuff just to make it sound better or whatever. You know what I mean? Like We, I, were, we were talking about Peter Molyneux yesterday on stream, actually. And uh, people were like, like I, was, I wasn't sure. I mean, I, I suspected Lewis... Or even Sips might have met him. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. Lewis did. Yeah, he went down to the office. Didn't I've he? met him a bunch of times. Yeah, yeah. So, do you think Peter Molyneux, if you if you want to talk about it, is just deluded, or do you think he's just a liar? Like I, I felt that he's just caught up in the idea of yeah, we can do all this cool stuff, and he pitches it as yes, we can do it, but they just can't. And I, I worry that his devs at Lionhead or wherever they are now are sitting around thinking, oh no, Peter, don't don't promise that. We can't do that. You know what I mean? I, like, I, I honestly, wasn't sure which it was. I don't think those characteristics are unique to him. I think that that is a uh, like a type of usually like a like a designer or like a, a studio head will be very much like that, right? Like yeah. will 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 sort of like spin you that lifestyle dream yarn where you're like you know you you get on board with it you get hyped about it and stuff and everybody thinks oh this is great i'm really excited blah 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 you know he's saying all this stuff and like um but then behind the scenes you know he goes back to his team and he's like all right guys well i've said we're going to do this and they're like yeah we can't do that he's like okay well, let's not do that we'll just do something else you know what i mean like it like it what what he's saying at that moment is for that moment only i, th I think there's like this massive combo combination of factors right like i think most bosses who set tasks that are, are are usually done with the best of intentions i'm sure there's some that are that they realize are a waste of time but i don't think most people are going out there thinking 
oh, I'm going to set this guy a thing which we know we're never going to use. You know, I think I think there's some I've done it a lot in the office. I've built a lot of spreadsheets or I've built a lot of like th- resources for people and then no one has ever used them for anything, you know, and it's kind of, you know, you you in your head when you start the project, you think, OK, this is going to save us a lot of time or this is going to be really handy. I think Peter Molyneux is someone who is this combination of factors that, first of all, I think he has a lot of yes men because he's got a lot of famous, you know, a lot of time he'll come to someone, he'll say, oh, can we do this? And the, the dev team will be like, sure, Peter, we could definitely do that. And then he sort of doesn't really follow that conversation through to its end and sort of then extrapolates out in his head what that means without like, he's a classic kind of Do you think, it, do you think he, he doesn't do the oversight part? So he's, no, yeah. he's good at he's, the he's, ideas, but not good at the follow through. He's a, he's a dreamer, but he's good at selling his dreams. And that's what a lot of yeah, them are. Yeah, because he's very, he believes in them. He genuinely is passionate yeah. and believes that these projects can be seen through. And I think that he has been a person who created a very amazing game in the original Fable. Um, and then since then has been i don't want to say let down by the teams that he's worked with but certainly worked with teams who were unable to capture the vision that he originally intended um whereas something like i think death stranding had was this um epic project that i think turned out amazing it's like it's like got so, really good triple a actors it's got really good like core gameplay loop it's got a crazy wacky story sure but it's still got twists in it that I don't know. It's just a real, real good game. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And, I don't, and I think that, you know, if we gave Peter Molyneux maybe the amount of budget that we gave uh, Hideo Kojima, maybe he would have made something amazing. But I feel like he's always trying to, I don't know, make the, the Avengers Endgame on $5 and a, you know, a, a, the local guy from down the road called Dave who's but got I, a laptop. But I guess the thing is Kojima's, Kojima's made a ton of games that have made a ton of money. So yeah, he, I mean, all the Metal Gear Solid and all the other stuff that he's done. Peter he really Molyneux has hasn't. <laughs> yeah. He just well, hasn't. No, but I, th- I, think it, I think it was kind of this thing where he sort of has, I think after the initial successes of his, of his career i think he he went downhill but i don't i don't think he has bad intentions or is a liar necessarily right. i think he is passionate and excited about his projects but ultimately isn't the person who is responsible for making that happen i think he right. can run the project and kind of oversee it and and assume you know be told by people that they can do it because that's what they say isn't it you, yeah. know, you go to a job interview like in seinfeld and they're like can you, you know, can you do this? And you're like, absolutely, I can do that. Because that's what you're told to say, isn't it? To get a job sure. in an interview. You know, it's like basic training. So like if they ask you if you could do something, just say you can. I think uh, I think it's a little bit different with Kojima as well, because he um, he built up like a, a, a big reputation off the back of really big games, but they were all of the same franchise, right? Like he's done other, he's done other games, but he was with Konami for a long time. Um, and and the Metal Gear series just got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. But there were like tons of games, right? Like there's like the, you know, like the ones that the, the ones that you know, right? Like you like one, two, three, four, and and five, I guess. But there was lots of little spin off games for other systems, like handheld games and all, all sorts of stuff. Like it was a really big franchise, right? And he he dedicated a lot of time to Well, I it. think that he, remember, though, has the backing of Konami. What, what I'm saying is imagine that imagine that Hideo Kojima had done a project that had, you know, spectacularly flopped. Yeah. And then ever since, you know, I could see him being a Peter Molyneux character, this over-promising, odd kind of character who puts out these things that don't make any sense, you know. But yeah. It feels like Death Stranding was very close to being a bad game. But thanks to the money and effort and, I don't know, like just clearly a lot of brilliant people... It, not just him, you know. Lots I think it of came people, out like, to be a really cool <clears throat> game. In the in the um, in the numerous credit sequences in the game, you'll see that there's hundreds and hundreds of people involved. Like it's mm. a really big project. Like it's insane. And I, I I've, I've been experiencing this recently because I think for the last few years I've very much played only a few, only a few games, um, really, and I've avoided console big budget console games yeah um, i'm the same sort of i'm sort of months. discovering these games for the first time now like i just started playing metal gear solid 5 yesterday sure off yeah. the back of finishing death stranding and enjoying it and finding now that like my 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 concept of, of a metal gear game was based off of me playing 
Metal Gear Solid for the PlayStation when it came out. Yes, and that was hiding in a box. That, yeah. yeah, that was a that was a huge game at the time. I was young though too, and uh, at the time I, I played PC games, but not nearly as much as I do now, obviously. Um, and it was just like my my memories of that game were were fond. I liked it, but it just uh, it, it I just sort of like you know. Um, just dismissed it as like, oh, it's just, Me a con- too. just a console game that like, it's probably not, I'm not the demographic for that. I'm older now or whatever. I don't need to play that. And I'm, I'm finding playing um, Metal Gear 5 is awesome. Holy shit. There's so many cool little things in it. You can, you, you, when you, when you knock a guy out, there's this system where you attach like this fucking parachute to them. <laughs> And airlift them yeah, off of the site. They go the fucking air. flying up in the air and they get yes. returned back to your base. I forgot about that. And your dudes like interview them and like assimilate them into your base, like like XCOM style or something. Fuck, man. There's like so many cool little mechanics that are just like that have blown my mind. I didn't realize that it was like a an actually really open ended sort of like uh, sandboxy kind of game. You know what I mean? I just thought it was going to be this really linear cinematic experience. Stealth, which, stealth in a box. Experience. I'm not yeah, against, but, but it really but the series just morphed. There's into, so much into more to that. it. That I was really surprised by. Like uh, it is, it is really uh, good. And, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm very, I feel like I've just sort of stumbled upon this whole wealth because uh, coming out August seventh, so it's a week from now, is Horizon Zero Dawn. Which yeah, is to be, I'm going to pick you know, that up too. I game. actually own it on the playstation and it's still in its shrink rack but i hadn't even opened it i I just can't i can't bring myself to play on the console i'm sorry (laughs) and so i I don't know and so i've been playing um uh detroit to become human oh it's really cool yeah i've heard that it's really good yeah i I should probably try that i'm I'm gonna play an assassin's creed game next like maybe odyssey or black flag or something because apparently they're quite good as well like i've just never played them apparently i mean uh, black flag is a classic um the classic sort of of light-hearted piratey setting with good it's one of the better ones in the series apparently black flag because it's quite it's, it's it's probably the most well loved one, but they've got like two since that, or three even more since that. Then I mean, I I I, I played the Assassin's Creed back in the day. I think I played the first couple, and then I got a bit bored of them. But I mean, they're the same, like very very solid, big budget, big hitting console games that have had a lot of work and money and effort put into them. And actually, the experience is pretty satisfying. Um, when I'm used to sort of playing so much indie PC kind of crap, yeah. Um, that, that it's kind of nice to just have this like i played the titanfall 2 campaign and it was like six hours long or maybe nine hours long but it was like completely like overwhelmingly cool for that amount of time you yeah. know the first zone has you like um i don't know bouncing around these really cool landscapes the second zone is really cool because you're in like this factory that builds a town and so you have to like there's like a you're you're jumping around in this factory that builds and you're like, why the hell are they, what is this machine, what is this factory building? Why is it building like prefabricated towns? And you realize it's like um, building these like destructible terrains to train the AI robots in. It's just a really cool yeah. um, idea. Yeah. Like, and it's, it's got, and then the third, the third zone is actually like, you're in like this kind of portal style facility and you have a little wrist watch thing that lets you teleport back in time to when the the, the facility wasn't wrecked so you, you're ba- basically just jumping for example like there'll be a giant flaming wall of fire and like loads of burn stuff and loads of bodies around you right and if you just go back in time it will just be like a normal yeah room be like loads of dudes doing and, science yeah and so you just pop into the science room run through it fine and then you're on the other side of the fire and it's like a really cool concept i mean it's sure these things have been done before but Titanfall 2 just felt like a really nice experience and I, I just had a great time playing it yeah I must say yeah so, it, that, that, it sounds crazy it comes but. highly recommended like a lot of people love it it's like uh, I feel like I just missed so many games I mean the, it's famous for the multiplayer experience and stuff but I mean they, yeah. they built in a really cool little campaign with a cool little story and yeah. I was like man I, I enjoyed it yeah it's, I it, it's nice but it's it, I mean it's funny because we're talking about this stuff like it's brand new because it is to us but like you know some of these games are so old now <laughs> People would be like, well, yeah, I mean, we played the, those games years ago. Like, it's not... We know they're good, some, yeah. Some great- I think it's because... I think also there is this desire, or at least a th- thought that because something's old or been out for a year, it's kind of ugh, old old hat, you know? Like, I don't know, like, because everything, all of these games came out on console a year ago, 
uh, and everyone's a bunch of people have played them or seen people play them or or uh, it's kind of old news you know yeah and so you you always want to feel like oh i'll play this new pc game that came out this week rather than something that came out a year ago on console and the, so getting over that is part of it i think um yeah so this this week so where was it two days ago i went out wow like i went hmm. i went into london on a date on a hot date uh, for dinner for dinner uh, with Jeez. with uh, some on a friends date. of mine, <laughs> not a date. Uh, not just a with date. some some friends of mine. And it was Did weird you bring because Mrs. Flax. Or... No, because we had. It's hard to get a babysitter because of the 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 lockdown and and the bubbling and all the rest of it. We've got you know the kids and the dog, and I was like, how do we arrange this babysitting thing at the moment? And it feels difficult. Uh, so we've sort of been, because she's working from home, uh, she's going out with some of her friends in the area and stuff like that, and I'll stay home, and then this was the first time I've gone out in months Your and bubbles months and months. are touching other bubbles, though. This very, very, very subtly. Some um, cross-pollination, I, I mean, cross-bubble cross action. I think one time going out, and the restaurant that we went to, Hawksmoor, it's like a big steakhouse uh, in, in Covent Garden, excellent food. They had a lot of distancing going on. So, for example... Not all the tables were full. There's a lot of space between them, um, and everybody's pretty much keeping their distance. You know, it was it was good. Everybody's wearing a mask on the transport and everything. Um, it was it was good. It felt it felt safe, but it was so weird being in London at essentially rush hour on a weekday and it just being completely empty. It yeah. was so so weird. The roads were just not busy at all. The train wasn't busy. Getting into Richmond from Twickenham, normally at 5.30 on a fucking Tuesday, that would be hell. No problem. It was so surreal. Uh, but it was really nice to walk across Waterloo Bridge and see, just see the city again. It's all like still there, you know, but it just feels like it was so, so far away. So Mrs. F was jealous that I'd been into London and she hadn't in such a long time. So today she's popped into town. Yeah. Do you think this, this, I mean, I read a thing that said that this was the, the longest period of quiet or the quietest period in recorded history. And it allowed scientists to do a lot of interesting things. Apparently like a lot of seismic stuff because there weren't so many roads and trains and lorries and stuff rattling along so much. Yeah. And, uh, there was a lot of studies they could do and the ocean was a lot quieter. And so, I don't yeah. know, there's a lot of things that were interesting anyway. Um, but I, I, I thought like, do you think that it is the, coming back to the office thing? Like, do you, I think a lot of businesses have realized that people can work from home and maybe that they work just as hard from home and that a lot of people I aren't just going to take the piss. Absolutely. and it, But it has to be from, the, from any business's perspective, unless you can justify to yourselves we we actually need to have a premises and people on it for whatever reason, whatever whatever that reason is. They must have seen a few things. First of all, I know that people can work from home because I know a ton of people are working from home. Mrs. F was working from home, very long hours, very hard work, all her colleagues the same, doing all the same work that they've been doing and just to the same standard. And in some cases, they found that it's much more easy to get in touch with your colleagues because they're just... You just get them on Zoom. You don't have to go to someone's desk. Oh, they're at lunch. Oh, I'll leave it. I mean, it. yeah, we've got a Discord, and it's really responsive. This I mean, this technology has been around for years. Like, there's it a, has. There's a reason why not everybody works from home, and the reason Absolutely. is absolutely because there's there's like there's lots of other industries that rely on people being out of the house for long periods of time every day, right? Like like Flax is saying, you go to a part of London, it's totally empty. All the sandwich shops around there are, are not going to be making any money. Right. Um, all the all the shops that people would go to at lunchtime aren't going to be making any money. Petrol stations aren't going to be making as much money because nobody's commuting. You know what I mean? There's there's huge knock on effects to it's true. everybody oh, yeah. working it's, from home. It is true. But consider this. We don't have people walking around the streets of London selling flowers anymore. We don't have people walking around selling cockles and mussels and all the rest of it. Yeah. Things do change. And I think... <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, that's it, true. It, I can't remember the last time I bought right. cockles and mussels. <laughs> so it's like, street. you know, if we just say, well, what about the sandwich shops? I mean, obviously, that in the short term, that's impacting them. And a lot of these small businesses that relied on offices, yeah. that is affecting them greatly. But if the shift comes and says, well, people just order food in, then people have to supply that need and it can't just be yeah, of course, but one place and one company so it will always it will always sort itself out eventually it will but it's not a it's not a gradual change this is this is uh like a big yeah. change for a lot of things at the same time which is, is yeah. the problem with the impact it's right? a bit of an uprooting situation <laughs> it is. you need to replant that that plant yeah yes I, I, yeah. however i will say that 
Given the environmental impact of commuting on not just the environment, but people's mental health, the cost of it, all that shit. The, 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 just, I mean, look at the roads in London at rush hour. This is not normal. This is not peak civilization. This is not stuff that we should protect. It's fucking awful. It is, and yeah. And if we can stop it and how, I mean, I fucking hated commuting. I know, I know Mrs. F does too. Oh, it's horrible. And you tell anyone who enjoys sitting in traffic. Like, yeah, nobody I, does. I, I think that I was, I was concerned because I have, as someone who has worked from over a long time, I appreciate that and you guys know too that it can be quite you can go a bit stir crazy if you're home all the time and i think a lot of people had a very stressful time when they were in lockdown yeah. and you know i think it's even now like and i think working from home can be very you know mentally difficult for, for people but actually turns out looks like on average maybe just going into work dealing with the commute dealing with the office bullshit was actually worse <laughs> Yeah, maybe the, yeah. the stresses of working at home. <laughs> well, it's it. There's a lot of factors, though. It's what you're used to as well, right? Like, and people, you you can get you can, even if a situation is kind of shitty, like having to commute or working in an office with people that you don't like or doing a job you don't like or whatever. You 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 can adapt to all that stuff, and people do all the time, right? Um, and then yeah. for something like this to happen, and there to all of a sudden be a change to that, something that you're used to, or maybe you just gotten used to, or whatever. Um, just takes time to get used to the new situation. I think overall, absolutely, like uh, working from home, not having to commute. Um, th there's there's so many benefits to it. Like people will probably save a lot of money. Uh, people will probably uh, be like maybe healthier or have like maybe even better mental health as a result. Like there's, but I think realistically, I, I think it's 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 a huge change all of a sudden um like the economic impact of of just the the lockdown in general has been huge and i think i think for it to like carry on sort of thing and without people having a chance to sort of change or adapt to it or whatever like some businesses have for sure like um but there's there's so many that that can't or haven't had the chance to and it's like, i just think if we if we know. wait and just say oh that change will come eventually it, it won't because there's no impetus, there's no driver for one company to suddenly say, "All right, fuck it, everybody work from home." Yeah. But but from a business perspective, why why have a premises in central London that costs a fortune? Like if you're an ability, if you have an office in central London, the cost of that is insane. If you have to build a new skyscraper to stick all your office workers in, the cost of that is insane. And the rent on these places, or the cost of building it, the infrastructure, the upkeep, I think, everything. I, 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 think I think in a lot of like these having... cases, it's a it's hmm. footprint. There's there's tax uh, yeah, implications like to all this as, as well, right? Like, you know, like even... Uh, like some 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 really big cities like like New York for example like when they when they were running out of money or 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 in 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 a in bad shape or whatever they offered tax incentives for building work to be done in places like Manhattan or whatever and uh, and people who bought property um, you know were were subject to tax incentives and stuff as well just to sort of uh, boost like the economy like boost boost the city's economy or, or whatever. Like there, there's there's a lot of implications like that as well. I mean, uh, a company that makes a, a ton of money and is as highly financially successful uh, will have a reason for uh, seemingly wasting a lot of money, right? Like I'm sure they know what they're doing. Well, a lot of it is prestige. Like a lot uh, of it is, I don't know, we can't have our offices out in the middle of nowhere. Every, everything, will have, like nobody's. everything will have a, a, you know, like a, a huge benefit to it if they're doing it, right? Like, Yeah, but the benefit I think it, is, I think it, it is it's very that. rare that they'd just be doing something like, yeah, let's just waste money today. All right, Ron, yeah, let's do that. No problem. <laughs> We're just going to waste money. No, but it's, it's not a waste. It's no, not but a waste. I think it is, I think it is wasting money. It's, it's like having a Rolls Royce and a Rolex, you know, yeah, but why do you a big have those? skyscraper. Why do you have those? You know, you have, you, exactly, you have them to show off, you have right. them to be daunting. It's like the whole reason a church used to be, you know, had all this incredibly elaborate extra stuff. You know, you don't need to have yeah. massive spires and, you know, go gigantically into the sky, but you want to show the power of God and you want to show the power of these companies that they're infallible, that you should buy into them, that you should, Like if you, you have know, guys in as potential them. clients, you were talking about selling stuff. Yeah. If you are selling your services as a company and they come to a few different companies and one of them is located right on the strand in a really nice offices or or in in canary wharf in at the top of a building yeah you, you'll go to those places 
and think, wow, it was really impressive. If my office is located in Doncaster... Or Slough. Uh, in the basement no, of no a nail salon. No offence to Doncaster, yeah. yeah. And just, just, just beneath a nail salon and next door to a fish and chip shop, and you're like, oh, uh, yeah, come in, mind out for the air conditioning, it's a bit rattly, uh, you know. You'd think, who the fuck are these guys? Even if their service is the same, people aren't going to... It's the reason banks have such impressive facades at the front of a bank. It 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 it, it, it makes you think this bank is, is this here to stay and trustworthy. Cast iron. It's yeah. funny though, isn't it? It's like uh there's degrees of that too though, because like um I feel I, I feel like that stuff is important for almost like cold call clients, right? Like if you're if you're in a business where you're you're trying to appeal to like a, a client that you've never met before based on like no recommendation or whatever, absolutely you have to have like a nice front, right? Like you need to have a, a, like a nice office and like, you know, professional, like well-presented looking staff and stuff like that. Yeah, and a, a big, big tit secretary. Sure. But and then, all, but, all but on the other hand, I feel like if you're, uh, if you're like in a business like, uh, like organized crime, for example, like where where a lot of your customers <laughs> you need an Italian no, like, pizza. Pie. Well, no, but like a lot of your customers are coming through from like a recommendation from another person or or whatever. Um, you don't care about all that kind of stuff, right? Like you could happily run your big successful business from a fucking boiler room or whatever, and it doesn't matter, you know, because the main thing is is that. You're, you you found this way to make money and the people that want to get involved with you also are interested in making money and they don't care about all that kind of stuff, right? There's 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 degrees right, but of you've it. also got to attract employees. This is the other thing, is that people don't want to work somewhere shit. So if you want to hire good people and you're competing with other businesses doing the same thing, yeah. if you can offer a really nice premises in a nice part of London where people will work, or you can offer a basement beneath a nail salon next to a fish and chip shop, People will choose your competitor and the good people will go and work for them. They're not going to say, I just love the company. I'm happy to work in this dump. I, I disagree. I, I think premises are actually important for, for reasons that businesses have to impress people. Employees, it's about customers, imagery. image. Yeah. It's, like the, it's like the government having the big Roman-esque pillars, buildings, you know, yeah. the federal buildings right. in America are all, the, all, all built to, to in the idea of ancient, you know, what we see as, you know, monuments that last for thousands of years, you know, yeah. even though these things were built in, you know, 50 years ago or whatever. <laughs> you know, people want to have the impression of power and have the impression of so if it, Yeah, strength. exactly. So if we replace that need to have uh, employees work from home, it doesn't matter where your business is located. The company, yeah. I, I think most companies would say, awesome, we don't have to have this huge cost that we otherwise had to have. I mean, you'd still need an office somewhere, but it could be smaller. Or you could do what a lot of places do and just have an office building that's like, if you need office space, we'll rent it to you on a need basis. Like, I worked in a place I, like I that. I think that's what's happened with the modern tech company. So the modern tech companies have this sort of playground, don't they? They have this idea that there's a campus or yeah. Googleplex, Facebook. Yeah. And there's YouTube, loads they of have different these, companies all based around one, these, one campus. They, they have this kind of university attitude towards and social attitude towards their um, work area. Um, well, those people, those guys have, have huge amounts of money. It definitely used to be that the the old school way of doing it was mega t or, or even it fits in like if you're a bank you have to have a mega tower block in the business center yeah. you know? whereas if you're um like a tech company you have to be slightly out on the suburbs and have like a you know a 100 acre um you know cool playground with a with a kids crash and a dentist and you know do you know what i mean you mm. have like all the stuff for your for your stuff i don't know it's it's i i think it's but that's almost like this thing where you invite someone over or a client and you have this prestige you i think they when you when a company has has so much money they have to they're almost forced to spend so it like, on like certain places like a football stadium certain you know? places really depend on it as well though like uh like flax is saying like imagine going to get some like uh like some representation from like a law firm or something and like like looks really matter in that in that case right like you want to go to like a really swanky office where people are like well dressed and and professional and stuff because if you went to a place and people were just wearing like Hawaiian shorts and fucking <laughs> flip flops and stuff, like, hey dude, what's up? Oh, what's what, out what, the window of what's his car, that? Whatever. A libel claim? Okay, like you know, it's certain certain things need to be a certain That's way. That's the kind right? of shit you get in a movie, right? Yeah. You get that you get that that lawyer who is like 
the big Lebowski type yeah, guy yeah. who turns out to be an actually absolute legend. Yeah. And he crushes all these guys in suits with his unorthodox way. Sure, but you know? but you gotta take that I'd chance, that. which a lot of people probably aren't up for, you know? It's like I just want a will. <laughs> I don't I don't need I don't need you to <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. Yeah, we'll, we'll do a will. Oh, you know, man. death is all in the mind, dude. <laughs> None of us really die, man. Yeah, there's so there's yeah. there's definitely certain professions where you know I don't know if it would work so much like that they're at home all the time. You know, like I wouldn't want to do, for instance, I know we have to now during a pandemic, but like um, you know, post pandemic, uh, you know, if if things go back to normal or whatever, I certainly wouldn't expect to be doing a Zoom call to like uh, a lawyer for a, again, for example. Or like uh, even Why? really a doctor, you know, like I know that like things that it's possible and, and people do it and stuff. But there's just certain now people. Now hold the camera between your legs. There's certain and bend people that you want to speak cough. to face to face and you don't want them to be, um, you know, um, not not sort of like traditionally presentable if you know what i mean like, right. same with like I, I think that attitude could change it, I, I, it could, I hope yeah, the younger but, people would would think differently i don't know i just i i maybe just because i'm so conditioned to uh, seeing like my doctor wearing like a shirt and a tie and stuff like that it'd just be i don't know if you went in to see your doctor and he was just like you know bumming around like you know i think a doctor over zoom is the weird one i think for me but i've 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 most of my contacts with with lawyers and um advisors and tax people is all done on on voice chat and has been for a long time sure. actually now but uh, there's still times where you have to meet these people face to face i think the only people i have to meet in real life are dentists and hairdressers <laughs> and one yeah, out of two for me. Usually, one out of two. I'll go. I'll go for the dentist on that one. Dentist as well. Imagine you turn up to your dentist and he's just like fucking shaggy from Scooby Doo, and you know. Or if he did it over Zoom. All right, open your mouth right near the camera. All right, now take the pliers. <laughs> okay, <yeah. laughs> Put that tooth over the back. This one. No, no, that the one next to you. Huh? Yeah. Now inject the needle into your gums. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That would be that'd be pretty grim. I'd give it a go. Well, make sure you floss. So you need to floss more. It's like, oh, no. I reckon the dentist could do it on Zoom. Just tell you to floss a bunch and sort of complain about you for not cleaning your teeth. Once we have robots, they, they could just interface with your house robot and he could do the dentistry overseen by the dentist. Oh, I don't know. It would have to be very... Pr I don't know if I'd trust... It's I fucking like weird, isn't it? I not with all that metal in my mouth. I don't like... Certainly don't like same a robot. With like, same with jobs where there's, where there's uniforms. Like, um, you know, like like police officers um you like people who drive uh, ambulances and stuff yeah you know like imagine imagine they i know there's I, obviously there's there's parts of the police where they don't wear a uniform or whatever but like well, well they have a different uniform don't they or more more of a smart uniform yeah that's you, right like, but like yeah. it's you wouldn't you wouldn't re I, I suppose you would see policemen dress like a bit more casually depending but like the 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 uniform brings with it some oh, it would be weird. some like some authority some 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 things that you just can't really replace i can't yeah it's the great leveler it's a great yeah, homogenizer yeah. For, for schools it's good because you know that it makes all the kids equal you know the poor kid the rich kid have to dress the same yeah you know it's, it's a good it's a good thing to have in that environment when otherwise you'd get people being picked on unfairly yeah um and in it, it when it, and in, in in the police and stuff like that it, it have wearing the uniform is part it almost puts you into the rule book it's almost like you're putting on the rule book that says you know you, you have to behave and act in a certain way and it makes you puts you in that frame of mind so yeah it, it obviously is very important to have these things we've also had we've team, had some you know? some fake police around our area lately really what? yeah so one of the one of the things that twickenham is very well known for <laughs> rugby is bike theft bike, bike theft oh. bike theft we're like the, the, <laughs> i was the, gonna the, say the, the rugby the, uh, no, sadly not it's uh we're, we're like the bike, bike theft, theft bike theft that's capital what i of think London. of when i hear twickenham yeah. i know yeah. that's what you should think about we are literally the bike theft capital of London, it's it's this area is is rife with bicycles and therefore with bike thieves. So more bicycles, more bike thieves. But anyway, um, there's a lot of them around, and I know that one lived on our road. Right. Uh, oddly enough, um, and she a bike thief. And yeah, she she stole fifty bicycles Jeez, before the police wow. were finally like, all right, we're going to have to lock you up for this. And I was like, wow. So it took fifty fifty bikes before they, they finally arrived decided. on bikes to lock her up. I hope so. And then they took her away on a bike. 
They were like on the back of a tandem. That would <laughs> well, they tried to stick her on the tandem, I, locked, that's... handcuffed to the. You better pedal, or you're only making it worse. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta build a case, though. You gotta, you gotta chase the money. You know what I mean? You can't just, you can't just turn up to her house and just arrest her with no evidence or whatever. Like if you're gonna, if you're gonna bring a case to court and bring that uh, first thing, you gotta make sure they go away for a long time. Right, so yeah. you got to get. They call her a bunch of times. You got to get like the wire she'd been caught taps and in, cautioned, and all the rest of it, <laughs> like the yeah. wire, but for bike. Thieves. You got to get the wire taps in. You got to do the surveillance and stuff. You got to. You got to. I'm do... sure there are lots of. I'm sure they had lots of pictures of her on on record, and she'd probably been arrested two or three times for nicking bikes. Hey, she was a heroin that. addict. Yo. She was a heroin addict, so she was known. Yo, Jenny, for... you you done that thing? You done that thing? You get that thing? Yeah, I got it <laughs> <laughs> for the fiftieth time. <laughs> Got another uh, one. I think, I think they're on to me, finally. <laughs> they might be listening. Use code words. So these fake coppers turned up just wearing... A, they were wearing regular clothes, but with like a, a vest, like a, a sort of white... Not white, but one of those a sort of um, high-vis vest that said police on it. Right. Uh, two, two blokes, and they knocked on my neighbor's door, and they are like, uh... Yeah, we're just in the area to check about uh, bikes stuff. So if you could show us your bikes to make sure they're locked up, then you know that'll help. Yeah, well, that's a, a that's there. a good one, isn't it? That's like um, you know, like oh, sometimes so they were fake police. So they yeah. do fake. They do that with uh, fake firefighters as well, don't they? So they they can get into your house and and scope it out, but uh, pretend yeah. that they're looking at your fire alarms and stuff. I wouldn't I wouldn't be on the outlook for fake. But if a policeman came to me, I'd just she shitting myself. You just Especially, say, "Can I see your you warrant know. card?" Or you call, is it one one one? I don't want to be rude like that. I'm not going to be a rude guy. I'm. I'm it's I not rude. If I got suspicious. I would. I would. I would not let somebody into my house with like that wasn't already uh, organized sort of thing. If somebody turned up and said. Uh, we're going to come in and look at something or whatever. I'd be like, yeah, I need to. I'm going to phone your station and just make sure that yeah. you're here for that reason. I, I and don't even they let know that you're the, here and the stuff. meter guy in. Yeah, I don't even let the meter guy in. I'll be like, what do you need? He's like, the me, readings from your electricity meter. I was like, all right, wait here. And I'll get a chair up and look up at the thing and I'll read it to him. But I'm not letting him in. No. It's a stranger. Yeah. You never let a stranger in your exactly. house. Exactly. Never. The only people that are coming into my house are people that I've phoned specifically and said, can you come into my house? And I'm expecting yeah. them. But like if somebody then there's a record. If somebody turns up and says, I need to come into your house, there's no fucking way you're coming in my house. Like, Damn right. You liar. God, this reminds me of something that happened to me um, this week. So Somebody came into um, your house. No, I was walking along um, down Bristol... Um, harbour and there's this little bit where there's um a little sort of pedestrianized road and it was it was fairly busy and the, there were quite a few people walking up and down most of them wearing masks and some some of the kids running around and stuff anyway there's not supposed to be any cars on there this sort of car had driven down and it was sort of an, a kind of i mean if it happens then you know you're just gonna put up with it right even though he's not really supposed to be there um, and he was like, and it was sort of, it was, he was sort of jer jerking forward and revving the engine and like beeping his horn at people, just being a real asshole. Right. He sort of, I think, I think I just sort of ignored it and walked on. And then he all, like drove up almost like right up behind me and sort of beeped me. And so I walked around to the, the driver's window and I just said in his face, fuck you, you miserable old fuck. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> I said that straight in his face. And he like... He was this sort of sour-faced old man, and he just gave me this. He he sort of put the put his foot on the brake very suddenly, as if to stop and like pull up, and um, stopped as if he was going to get out of his car. And so I took this sort of step back, you know, assuming he was gonna. So I'd, I'd kind of said my piece. I wasn't going to continue. Yeah, I've said him. my piece. Fuck you. I sort of I sort of <laughs> took my took my step back and I walked between these there's these little bollards, you see. So he couldn't have driven his car through the bollards, right? Nice. Um so I knew he wasn't gonna Right. In the back of my mind. So He's gonna run all, you over. <laughs> well it, it was it was a very snap decision. Um and I didn't I didn't really I sort of I lost control of myself a bit really. Because I I don't know why. You know, sometimes that happens. It does happen. Especially if someone's been a twat and you've seen it. And, and it sort of triggered it's, me, it's and I really thought I, it was almost, it was almost like he did it once, and I thought I'm not going to say anything, and they did it again, and I was like I'm not going to say anything, and then it was like sometimes that happens, right? Like like classically, you know, I know someone's being noisy out the window, and they're like, okay, if they if they're noisy again or doing something they shouldn't be doing again, I'm I'll, I'll say something, and then you don't, okay, because that's the second time, and then the third time you're like, well, I didn't say anything last time, I'm going to say something now, and it takes I, I'm not really that I've, I've, I'm feeling a bit anxious about it now. 
but it was it was this moment that triggered me and I was instantly like on edge after I'd done it and I was worried that he was gonna get out of his car and chase me or something but he was this old fucking guy and I knew he wasn't gonna you know if he if he came for me I could just sort of run keep it keep at a distance right. were you close to any large bodies of water you could have uh, could have dealt with well in traditional yeah, fashion well um anyway I thought that was a that was a, an interesting moment right. that happened at the weekend so did and he just drive off he just drove off. Did you yeah. do a double take um, and you realized, oh shit, it's my personal trainer <laughs> for all these years. Hey, fuck your mother. He was too. just trying to get my attention. What if he what if he went down the window and said, Oh, sorry, I just wanted to say I love the Triforce podcast and uh, I have a tiny penis. You'd be wow. like, Yeah, do you imagine that? Imagine you'd been really well, rude to somebody and then they're like, I, 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 I that does happen. Lovely people do stop me on the street and say that, but they're never grey haired old men. Um, no, who are driving like knackered old fucking fiestas or whatever down the wrong way in a pedestrian right. street. They're usually not those kind of people. What I want um, to know is, I got a fucking ticket for going accidentally into a bus lane for two seconds when I was in Bristol. How's this lad not getting booked for that? He's going down well, a pedestrian area the wrong way. Maybe he does all the time. It. It's like the kind of person who has to be arrested a couple of times before the police come around and find all the bikes. He's in. probably like <laughs> yeah. he's pro- his, his car's probably like Kramer's. Like you probably open the glove box and there's just like a billion tickets come spilling out. You know, he's like he's <laughs> yeah. like some serial like fucking uh, offensive these driver. These people, these assholes, do exist. Yeah, I mean, they're out there's there. Plenty of them. They are out there. It's the same kind of people who flaunt the rules like i don't know like like there's a little bit of um people flaunting the mask rules at the moment and i i I get it like you know it's okay you have to wear a mask in shops but not if you're eating not if you're having a takeaway not if you're in a queue for a coffee or any of these other there's all these it's it's a bit weird it's not uh, really really a lot of clarity coming out of uh the but uh, but the I'm, I'm I'm happy. I think in general, like getting people to wear less masks, or wear wear masks and stuff more, and be more aware of their health, meant is, is probably going to mean that lots less of the other infectious disease, and that's good because you know I probably would have had a cold by now or something anyway. This this summer, someone would have given me something, you know. Do you think it's going to affect our our uh, ability to fend off things like colds? Um, I don't think I don't, that's how it works, is it? Really, I don't think we no. build up that much in me. I think I think getting something, I think you're better, and then I, getting immune I, to I think, it is like not going to make you less likely to get the one next one. I think every cold virus is different, right? Because like, they say that if, if virus is different. kids that aren't exposed to like dust and dirt and germs early on in their life tend to be the ones that develop things like asthma and, and tend to get sicker. Because their body, they haven't exercised that part of their body sufficiently. I don't know if that's true. Yeah, but I, I don't. But if that was, if that was the case, we'd have this sort of period of time where you'd have to be like, okay, it's time for you to get another sickness, Mister Mister Forsyth. You haven't had your yearly dose of a cold this, yeah, this time. Maybe you know. once you're an adult, your body's already just like, we know what we're doing. Yeah. But. Once you're not a toddler anymore, I think your, your immune system's usually developed, and if you eat properly and make sure you do it with exercise, I think you usually be as good as you're going to get. And not only that, but watch. Washing your hands properly is a huge thing. I too. always do. I don't, I don't understand why people don't. Well, they I'm don't. I'm not even sure the old snake venom thing's true. Is that like an urban myth? Well, can, you can people build make up themselves a... immune to snake venom over time? I don't Carrie know. Carrie always did in Princess Bride. He developed an immunity to why I came powder. I want to I <laughs> know if that's true. Yeah. What other things can you do to make yourself immune? Oh, certainly people who drink a lot can build up a tolerance to alcohol and drugs, I guess, too. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. But... I don't think I don't think illnesses, sicknesses work in the same way. I mean, um, when you first start smoking, you get a head rush from like the nicotine and all the rest of it. But with time, you you need more, yeah, like to get the same. Uh, Your body wants to effect. get back to that point yeah. where you're getting a head rush off the. Off the first one, I think. I think that's just damaging your serotonin receptors or whatever. Though I think they've been desensitized and damaged. I, I think that's more less to do with building up an immunity and more like yeah. sanding off sharp edges of your brain. Oh, by the way, quick Huel update. I've been on it for a week now. Right. Okay. How's the diarrhea? It's no, none. No, none. None. How have yeah. how, how have your stools been in general? Just um... I, I, t- I, I'm pooping less. Right. I'd say once a day. Right. Um. And Wait, you poop more not, than once a day before? Yeah, sometimes, yeah. Jeez. Not mm. every day, but sometimes, yeah. Um, okay. And I'd say ge- generally I'm a morning pooper. You know what I mean? I right. get up, have my cup of tea, and then maybe 20 minutes, half an hour after yeah, that, I'm ready to I poop. Us- the, the, the cup of tea or coffee usually triggers That's the, the trigger. Yeah, and nicotine as well is a big... Yeah. Is a big uh, it happens when you're getting 
getting older, you become more regular. I don't, yeah, I don't think anything <laughs> triggers my poop. Like my, I'm, I'm, I'm fa- like I'm fairly regular. Like kind of the, sort of the same time every day, and then some days I go and I and I don't have a poop. You know, like you sometimes there's like a day between or whatever. Have you? Do you notice that? Do you like? Oh, I haven't pooped today. Only, only th- thanks to this conversation have I noticed that I didn't poop <laughs> yesterday. Um, right, but I mean it happens, but. Uh, Pooping twice a day, that's like pretty rare for me. It 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 has happened, but it's pretty rare. Like um I don't know what the right I think both of them are normal, I think probably. Once that's a lot of waste, day. Yeah. Eh? Like you're pooping twice a day, like you yeah, a lot think of fucking waste. But but honestly with, with the Huel, it, it it's once a day, it's it's fine. And then Well, it's to do with the fiber though, isn't it? Like so I was talking to um who was I talking to? I was talking to someone in the office. Uh I won't say their name. And they said to me, oh, you know, I've been having a bit of uh, diarrhea. And I was like, oh, God, you need more fiber in in your diet. And they said to me, but I eat fruit and fiber every morning. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, that's like the most fibrous thing there is. How could you have a problem with fiber and be eating like basically just cardboard? Um, I think if you eat too much fiber, maybe you poop more. Because it's just oh, I mean, I think that might be a. I, a, a I read a thing that said you literally can't eat too much fiber. I don't know where that might be bollocks. Was that on the side of a box for fruit and fiber? Fruit and fiber, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> this yeah. is the age-old thing, though, isn't it? I don't think you can trust uh, people's um, claims to like to diet and stuff like that when it comes to this sort of stuff, right? Because. It, you have to know your own no, body. No, but it happens all the sure. time. Like, hi, I've got I've got crippling uh, diarrhea, and it's and and it's full of blood, and uh, and it's it <laughs> oh, hurts God. really bad and stuff. Oh yeah, what's your diet like? Perfect. I don't know what could be wrong. All right. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for that. Oh, you I know see. What and then you don't go any further than yeah, that. Yeah. And you're like, well, like, what is perfect? And they're like, well, I wake up with a liter of ice cream. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like <laughs> something is definitely causing this. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sure it's something that you're doing. I hate to break it to you, but you know what I mean? Like, but that's cool. If your diet's perfect, don't change anything. Just live with diarrhea forever. That's that's cool too, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just like it's such a weird. Well, no, but I thing, just didn't, I didn't know what to say then when he said that he ate like fruit or fiber every morning because I I'm pretty sure I could be wrong, but that's got a lot of fiber in it, right? Sure. I mean, it's in the name. I mean, I know how these guys like can lie to you and stuff. But what else was I supposed to say? Was I supposed to say, oh yeah, try? Try replacing your lunch with a dry Weetabix. Like, I don't know. How else do you get more Well, you fiber? can get diarrhea from being dehydrated as well, right? Maybe he's... Can you? Maybe he's a bit dehydrated. Yeah, you can. Surely I the, thought it was the opposite. No, yeah, that's the opposite. No, I think I think when you're dehydrated, you can get some diarrhea as well. I mean, I'm not I sure. Don't I don't know. Pause. I'm not a doctor. I'm just... This, no, I, I, don't, I don't think that's no, true. That's, none of okay, us are. Let me see. What we need to second. do is get a doctor on Zoom and ask can him. Can you get... Dia, dia, please, please Ria. don't, please do not message us, guys. This yeah, we don't want to know diarrhea. about all this. We don't want to know that. We want to know about where you are listening to the Triforce podcast. If the body loses God. a substantial amount of fluids and salts, and they are not quickly replaced, for example, by drinking, the body starts to dry up or get dehydrated. Severe dehydration can cause death. The usual causes of dehydration are a lot of diarrhea and vomiting. Yeah, because that dehydrates you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I don't think dehydration causes diarrhea. Right. I think it's the opposite, the other way around. Yeah, that's some um, medieval people medicine who, people right who there. People die of like cholera <laughs> and stuff. Die Di- of, diarrhea die of ca- can cause dehydration, which means the body lacks enough fluid to function properly. Dehydration yeah. is particularly dangerous. That would be a medieval yeah. doctor. The problem here is too much water. Yeah, yeah, that's what the diarrhea. <laughs> You're gonna need to rub <laughs> some mud on all around <laughs> the whole of your dick. Um, Eat this pound of salt and uh, lie in a bed of sand in the sun. For two days. What we'll do is we'll we'll get you've got too much liquid in you, so we'll get some of the blood out of you with these leeches. We'll cut your wrists open and we'll just put you in the warm bath. Okay. <laughs> what causes okay. diarrhea? My, uh, many viruses cause diarrhea, including norovirus oh, yeah. link and rotavirus link. Viral uh, look, gastro. Well, that's not Wikipedia and, doctor, my friend in the office. Gastroenteritis is a common cause of acute diarrhea. Bacterial infection. Several types of bacteria can enter your body through contaminated food or water and cause diarrhea. I guess that's still happening, isn't it? Absolutely. People, it could well, be something absolutely. as simple as if they drink from a, the same water bottle every day if it's got if it's not clean. 
It could be it could be a myriad of things that they're doing as part of their yeah. routine that seem harmless. It's probably but they actually need to stop them. Diet is probably the last thing um, that you should you should really look at when it comes to diarrhea because it's more like okay. a virus thing. I think. Oh right. Well, he said it was light light diet. It wasn't. Sometimes like it can be heavy. an imbalance in the humors. You've got to keep the humors right. balanced. <laughs> <laughs> what right. uh, okay so hang on so it wasn't you need to lick a new it wasn't full uh, diet what like what is your guys sort of line that crosses where it's like a hundred percent full diarrhea i'm having to like, run back and forth to the toilet i think i'm finished i yeah have to go like back. like as it's soon an as you emergency finish pooping, every time i need to go and it just and it absolutely sprays out of your ass as well right yeah it's not just like and it hurts like you get those cramps yeah and you just you shiver and it's like it's not just like a bit horror. runny or like like it doesn't look like a chocolate mousse or whatever. This is like pure water. This is right? literally just a I, gusher. I think a chocolate mousse is yeah. okay <laughs> once gusher, in a while. Yeah. That's 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 my sort of ideal diarrhea. I think it's as okay well. to have like a chocolate mousse, but if it's like always, always a there, chocolate mousse, I think yeah. it's, it can get I think a chocolate mousse is pretty normal, but like anything. Shout a bit out to more... everyone listening to this whilst eating their chocolate mousse. Have fun. With <laughs> that. I don't want to get. I don't want to get too personal, but I don't know what I've been doing recently. Okay, maybe it's just been a combination of like good hygiene, decent, uh, decent enough diet, bit of exercise, or whatever. Low stress, you know, surrounded by a loving family. My poops um, have been sunshine, fantastic, lollipops, rainbows. Like they just come, fantastic they just poops. slide out so, like a, so like good. a torpedo in the tube of a submarine. They just slide right out. Wow, no problem. I go to wipe my ass, and I didn't even need to. Honestly, it's clean. No, that's called a ghost poo. Yeah. Oh no, that's not. That's called no. That I think that's a ghost actually. A ghost poo is I, one where you go to the toilet and poo, but then you look in the bowl and there's nothing, and you wipe and there's what nothing. is yeah, a yeah. It's like it ghost wasn't even there poop. Yeah. What is a ghost the, poop? Ghost poop. The one that slips down. The kind disappears. where you feel like the poop come out, but there's no poop in the toilet. A clean poop. The kind where you poop it yeah. out, see it in the toilet, but there is nothing on the toilet paper. Its most noticeable yes. trait are the skid marks on the bottom of the toilet. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Actually, <laughs> that that happens. It's like a that footprint. That, I prefer yeah. the skids to be on the on the bottom of the toilet than under the water. Um, in my in my ass on the toilet paper, or even worse. You know, I'm glad we. I'm glad we got around to this eventually. You know, we, well, come back to our roots. Every once in a while, when you're you're walking around oh. and you're just like, all of a sudden, your inner ass gets really itchy, and you're like, ah, oh, shit. I hate an itchy ass. It's just like there's probably like a bit of poop in there causing this this itch, right? Because what else is going to cause the itch on your inner ass? A tiny tear just, could be a tiny tear. Could on just the be like one really oh, small God. molecule of poop just like causing the irritation. You know? My dog, that you know what? My dog suffers with this. She does a poop, then there's a tiny bit more to come out. And she's like scuttling around in that poop stance that dogs have. She's trying to walk because she's like, I know I'm nearly finished, but this well, they, tiny like, bit of they pull their asses on the ground like to scratch it. That's if they thing. have worms. They do that. They do that when they oh, have worms. God. Yeah. I did that the other day. I don't think I have worms. Well, you just scratched your ass on the ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've got worms now, buddy. <laughs> you should try doing that, actually. <laughs> I, I think they should do that as like a yoga move or something because that shit is hard to pull off. Like it's it's really hard to put right. your ass on the ground and pull your ass like that. So I don't got, think yoga got, is, is about finding moves that are hard to pull off. No, but I feel like <laughs> if you're going to do yoga, you might as well do something uh, at the same time, you know, like get more bang for your well, buck. Well, yoga is all about like, that, Yeah, okay, I'm, 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 I'm working on my yoga, but I'm also able to itch my, you know, scratch my inner ass at the same time. Do, right. do you think that they sit around and come up with new moves for yoga? Like is yes. there is there like yoga yeah. yoga progress yo it's yogress? a big it's a big industry now so you get a lot of a lot of people who are involved in it will like do their own There's sort a whole of brand of yoga full of which people is, who are just sitting around coming up with new yoga moves yeah. no the way it works is that you do like a yoga position and then there is more, a more advanced version of that where you can tap into other right what I'm saying well. is are people s literally like. Is there a, some kind of a think tank yoga somewhere. retreat somewhere where they're like, we need to exercise this muscle. We need a yoga style move for this. You're going to have to have a level five clearance for this. They are working exactly. on a new move in there that is strictly top secret. You hmm. cannot know what. The You've heard of downward dog. <laughs> now itchy butt dog. We're, we're, we're working on it for several years. Right. Namaste, it's a namaste. Top, top secret yoga bunker in the, in the middle of. Farting is like a quite 
common, common thing in yoga classes. It is very common. You just have to accept. You just if if it happens to you, just don't don't worry about well, it. Well, I went to a yoga. hot yoga class a few years ago. You ever done hot yoga? Yeah, no. I have. It's, it's it was horrible. horrendous. The heater was. The guy was like, "I'm sorry, the heaters are broken. We can't turn them down, so they're like at max." But he's like, "But you'll all be all right." And after it was like, I thought it was a one hour session. The one hour sessions I could do. Uh, this was an hour and a half session. That extra Good half an God, hour. I can't even do half an hour. Oh my God, it was exercise. so rough. Like, I'm not kidding. That My yoga mat, the water was just pouring out of me. Like, I was drinking... <laughs> I had I had to refill my bottle twice. Shit, you! They were like I'm doing dehydrated, this like yeah. they were like. Did you have like, diarrhea when you got home? No, I didn't. I was fine. Oh, right. But I, it was literally the water was. I could see it just pouring off me. It was like that gif of the guy sweating, uh, <laughs> yeah. Key and Peel. You know, yeah. it was literally like that. And I looked around, and there's all these. It was me and a bunch of ladies, basically, and one other dude. The dude was like stripped to the waist, ripped. I was like, whatever, dude. I'm in this baggy old t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm doing I'm doing my poses and all the rest of it, and the instructor's constantly having to adjust me, and I'm just like, uh, you know, she's like, Stop no, further me. down, yeah. So, yeah. but but it was so hard, it was horrific, and then I had to cycle home, and I got home, and I was just like, dead. And Mrs. F was like, I know that was an hour and a half, what and I didn't tell you, but. To you? <laughs> She booked it. She was like, it was a free session I could book you. She's like, she I did, tortured I should, you. Yeah, she was like, I should have told you it was an hour and a half. I said, yeah, you should. Yeah, you should, because I wouldn't have gone. Oh, my God. It was horrible. That probably put you in good shape for the next like, year, though. That probably that, just that one like session, whole, yeah. yeah. I, I, if I wish I could, I, if I if I was a uh, if I was a, a better man, I, I would do yoga every week or a couple of times a week, because it is super chill and honestly some of the ladies there are in amazing shape you need to get you need to get like a beer hat but fill it with huel uh, but make it (laughs) make it voice activated so you're just like all right everybody now do a downward dog okay Heel <laughs> just like dispenses <laughs> into your mouth. <laughs> oh no! Oh, fuck. I because you know when when I got the the heel delivery, it comes with the 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 heel uh, sort of shaker. And it's like a big plastic thing with heel and massive letters on the side. Right, and it came with a t shirt, which yeah, of course yeah, yeah. I am wearing a fucking heel t shirt. I gave that to my daughter, and I was like, uh, you know, I-, I wondered if I turn up to the yoga with my heel. I'd fit right in, you know, if I'd lost a bit of weight. Yeah, it'd be but first, normal. I'd be like, yeah, I'm on the heel doing the yoga. How hard is it? It's not hard enough. I want to be fucking diarrhea and out of my eyeballs at the end of it. <laughs> I, I, d- I don't think they would have like the hat with the tubes. It would be like a, one of those harmonica one man band things when you'd snort it off of that. <laughs> Snorting my heel. Yeah. I do, the water's a waste, man. I just, I just, I view it straight up the nose. Yeah. Straight up the nose. Fuck. Oh, it gets it straight into the bloodstream. So someone uh, yeah. on stream said that. People call Huel protein, which I thought was quite funny. Protein. I like that. That's protein. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Hey, um, you were on uh, you were on Pitch Please last uh, last time they did a Pitch Please, right? Yeah. Well, guess who's doing Pitch Please? Oh, baby. Today. It's fun. Pitch Please I is mean, our, our sister podcast about gaming uh, where you pitch your ideas for games. Yes. And they talk about whether or not they're possible. It's a great podcast. Um, it's on all good platforms i feel like i'm gonna be a, a bad guest though because i'm just gonna pitch the same game that i've been banging on about for like a year now on alaska, stream. bro sim alaska right yeah that's Dude the sim one alaska. That's Dude the sim. one yeah so um they're, they're very they're very cool uh they know about game development so they'll be like they'll suggest stuff or what's the hook or this that and the other they really liked my game right which was really nice so uh, i was happy with that okay. but uh yeah it, it was a lot of fun they're, they're, and they're all lovely lads aren't they so yeah it's nice. super fun yeah super fun well there you go that's a little advert for the end of the podcast uh thank you everyone for listening yeah um, thank you we'll see you we'll see you next time see you next bye. next time all right bye bye bye, bye.